Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look and building these things here. Now, these are five inch screen, 32 channel DIY FPV goggles from Banggood. Now, we're looking at these because this was a subscriber request, and this is one that somebody was interested in because they represent a standalone set of FPV goggles with the addition of just a battery for less than 66 quid. And the other thing that that subscriber asked us to have a look at, which we'll do in another video, is this little device here. This is a little all-in-one e machine flying machine, and it has an FPV transmitter and camera already in it. it even has a little, if you can see that, CC3D. So between the two of them, we can actually get an FPV setup for a very, very small amount of cash. So the subscribers asked us to get these two couple of things in, and have a look at both of them. So we do need to say a very big thank you to banggood.com for shipping this so that we can make the video. And what we'll do in this one is we'll quickly show you what comes in the packet, show you the actual goggles themselves and how you build them. And then once we've built them, we'll kind of talk to you about what it actually looks like, how they all work. So the first thing is, is let's just talk about how they arrive. Uh, when you order them, they actually come in two boxes. You get a big box that has the actual goggles in themselves, and you also get a separate little box that the screen comes in. Now that was a little bit confusing when it first arrived, but when you start unpacking it, it kind of makes sense. You have the goggles themselves, and you have the lens on the inside. You then have the position where you're going to install the screen, it comes with an FPV 32 channel receiver already installed and in position. So that's ready to build. In addition to that, you get a couple of aerials or antennas. You get kind of a flat uh, patch antenna and you get a circular polarized one. Uh, just make a note of this. The connector that you get on these is the one where the connector has the pin in the middle so it's different from the default fat shark ones that you tend to get in addition to that then you get the screen so here it is it's kind of a five inch screen on the back is all the driver electronics and there's an extra little three buttons that you can plug in the side and there's even a bit of mounting foam as well in addition to that you get a couple of bits of velcro to mount your battery which is nice touch you don't get a battery with this you're going to have to order one and then the last couple of things you get, which is actually inside the goggle, are these two things here, two little bits of metal. And I'll show you what they're for in a second. The last couple of things you get are you get an Iron Man sticker for the front of the goggles, if that's what floats your boat. And then you also get the cable that obviously was part of the FPV receiver that's the goggles, which gives you your kind of FPV out. So if you were using that receiver in something else, you could use this to both power it and then get your audio and video feeds into whatever you're using. But we don't need this cable because all of that is gonna be handled by the cabling inside the goggles themselves. Now the goggles will work on 2S and 3S batteries. So anything of a couple hundred milliamps or up is gonna be a good idea. We're gonna use something like this, a little 3S 350 milliamp hour battery. I run a lot of the cheap and cheerful goggles on these kind of things, and you'll easily get a day's flying out of one of them. So let's actually have a look at how we're gonna put this together. So we'll open the back of the goggles up. And you can see in here, there's just a lot of empty space. So there's a cable that's going to go into the screen itself. So this cable just clips into this input here at the side of the screen. So there we go, nice and easy. And then we have the power connector, which terminates in one of these things, like a little um, servo style lead. I'm not using that because I tend to use JST style connectors for all my batteries. So I just made up a little adapter lead like this. It's got a servo lead at one end and a little JST at the other. I'm just gonna plug that in there. That'll allow me to power everything up. I'll connect the aerial. And we're not gonna mount the screen just yet. What we'll do is we'll just test it's all working. It's a pr pretty good idea before we start putting everything together. So there's our screen, there's our receiver. We're obviously gonna plug it in. Off screen, I'm gonna plug in a Fat Shark transmitter. And now that Fat Shark transmitter is plugged in and turned on, 
then we'll power this up and make sure we're all okay. Double check polarity is right before we plug it in. We don't want the magic smoke. Plug it in. That looks very promising. There is the camera feed. I've got the screen upside down. But it is useful to, for us to actually check which way is the top of the screen. So that is the top of the screen, the bit with the green protective plastic. I'm going to mark that with a little bit of ink just because when I come to put it together it'll be heartbreaking if that doesn't work. So that looks really promising, that's great, there is the camera all working. Now let me unplug this to show you the rest. To mount it in here is a little bit interesting. We're going to mount the screen in the back here. Uh, these are actually two magnets that it's going to connect to. Not onto it, but underneath it so it's in the right position. Now, to make sure that that's going to stay where it is, we're going to need a drop of very strong glue. And we're going to have to then glue these little metal pieces onto the top of the screen so that it's going to fit and stay in position. And then the last thing we'll do then is then we can just mount these three position switches onto this double sided tape that they've thoughtfully put here. So let me just go away and just put those two dabs of, I'm gonna use epoxy actually to put them on here. I'm just very quickly going to mark roughly where they need to be. And then that way when I do it, I'm not going to put all the pieces in the wrong place. Okay, so we'll come back in a sec and we'll have a look at that when I've got it almost all together. We'll do the final assembly and then I'll show you what it's like to use. So the epoxy resin has just about set. So there we are. We've actually put those two lugs onto the top. We know it's the top because I've marked it with the T. It's covered with a protective film. We are going to take that off when we put these things together for the very last time. Now we're going to test fit everything, make sure it's all working okay. So the first thing we'll do is we'll plug the screen into this cable. I'm just pulling that up there. Make sure the polarity is the right way, black to black, red to red, and the rest. We're going to pop the screen in position. And then the very last thing we're going to do is just peel off the top of this sticky plastic. This is quite tricky to do where it is. And then we'll mount those buttons. Okay, so that's it. So with a little careful routing of the wires around the foam that supports the back of the screen, then we can close everything up. And there we are, the goggles are ready to go. So the power cables coming out the side, you'll notice that we've put the little bit of uh, Velcro so we can mount a battery on there when we're ready. And then to adjust the focus, you move these knobs and as you can see the entire top of the thing moves in and out. Now I am slightly long sighted, so things really close up are tricky to see and I can just about see everything fine if it's on its very extended position. Now let's power up my little FPV transmitter. I've just turned on a little Fat Shark transmitter, it's a little 25 milliwatt number with a, a 700 TVL line camera. And there we can see the image in the goggles and it looks fantastic. Now one of the things that I have done is uh, when we've been playing with this is I have noticed that when the battery gets low uh, you don't get any warning of it there's no beepering and anything the image just completely disappears so one of the things I would recommend when you're using these kind of goggles is make sure that you have a freshly charged pack and you have something like a voltage checker uh, with you so that you can just plug it in and make sure that it's all okay now to change the channel and the band that you're receiving on if you can't see your um, transmitter and there we are again just look how fantastic when you actually have your uh, head in this it's like sat in an IMAX theatre it's one of those where you actually have to move your eyes around the screen in order to see all the information 
the edges are very slightly skewed out. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. Um, but you can kind of see it, it, it looks like a massive screen in front of your face. So if you have an on-screen display, you're going to have to move your eyes around in order to pick up the vital information. To change the channel and everything else is pretty straightforward. If you just open the back up, then you can see here that we have the uh, bits and pieces changing. So we can see at the moment that we're on band D. If you just press, there's a little button right underneath the LED. If you press it once, it changes the channel that you're on, and you can go through all of the um, eight channels available in each band. If you press and hold it, and keep it pressed, then it'll take you through each band. Band A, band B, band C, sometimes called um, band E, and then band D, sometimes called band F. Now, now band D is the default Fat Shark transmission. So it's nice to see that these are working so nicely with Fat Shark goggles. So let me just close these up. And there we are, we're looking at them perfectly. And if you want to change anything in the actual image itself, then you've got these three buttons in the corner that we mounted that you can use to change what the screen's doing couple of comments about these. I really, really like them. I'm quite impressed. I love the fact that it's an all-in-one design. I don't have to go out and buy separate receivers and other things in order to make it work. I was worried about light leaks from the side here uh, because I don't know if you can see, you can actually see kind of right the way through. Um, if you found that you're in a particularly bright environment and you're getting a little bit of light leaking around the back of the screen, which you may do because there are gaps here, the screen doesn't completely fill up the front of the uh, of the goggle then it's probably easier to just get yourself a little bit of the kind of soft foam that you tend to get in uh, electronics or flight controllers and just hot glue a little bit on the insides here just a little strip on each side to stop the light leaking through the other thing I was worried about is this red flashing LED which is showing us the band that we're on is behind the screen as well and I was worried that that would kind of be flashing away and making it look quite untidy but in reality it works fine so in summary I would say that if you're interested in getting to FPV goggles and you don't want to spend a fortune these are definitely worth a look Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.